welcome again, everyone. My name is Josh Weiner, and I'm a vice president at Media Current. Our commitment is to improve the large enterprise for the good using advanced digital strategy and Drupal. I've been in the business uh, about 20 years, dating myself there, but I remember being in um, conference rooms like this, trying to sell through why it was important even to have a website to begin with, using language like 24-7 access to content, uh, cyberspace, and, and things like that. So we've come a, a long way. Um, born and raised right down the road in uh, Pennsylvania, about 90 minutes from here. Graduated from uh, Penn State University, and now I reside in Atlanta with my wife and daughter, Brooke. My passion point really is trying to find the why behind large enterprise projects. They're typically $600,000 plus, so it's a big investment for the organization. It's important to know what measurable impact that has on the business. So the data that I'm presenting to you today is taken from approximately 30 large enterprise projects over the last two years. I'm also very active in attending panel discussions with IT, marketing, and procurement professionals. So there's a lot of data I pulled from that and a lot of survey data that I'll be presenting to you as well. And what I love about DrupalCon really is it's all about the how. We come together uh, during these uh, few days to share best practices, and it's a really, really important time for all of us in the community. So you're already probably doing this, but please take the time to meet new people and share information about the projects you're working on. We have a booth uh, uh, on the trade floor. Uh, Media Current has an after party tonight. I'll be here through Thursday. If you want to take a deep dive on any of this, happy to take you through it. So the reason the how is so important in the large enterprise is these projects are very, very, very complex. It takes an army just to get a large enterprise project off the ground. You could get a green light for a project in March and really not even begin be able to begin work until July based on a lot of the procurement measures in place. So we have some things to share for you there. And we talk a lot about you know the three C's of Drupal and leaning heavily on core and contrib and not doing a lot of custom code. But that said, all of our Drupal projects in the large enterprise are very custom in nature. And if we don't like that word, let's just let's just call them targeted. But when it all comes down to it, you know, the reason I've been in this business for so long, the reason I love attending DrupalCon, the reason I love the Drupal community in general, is we help shape the internet, all of us in this room. And not a lot of people uh, can go to bed at night sharing that you know, same sentiment. Uh, when people ask me what we do or what I do at, at cocktail parties, that's exactly what I say. I help shape the internet. And then they say, well, how do you do that? I say, well, let me tell you about a little uh, product called Drupal. Um, and this is, seems to be a theme on the trade floor, too. Uh, if you're willing to sit through a Pantheon demo, uh, they have a t-shirt that says, we make the internet. So clearly, a lot of influence everyone has in this room uh, regarding helping drive digital. We drive over 3,000 attendees to DrupalCon because of this statement. So um, very, very exciting time uh, to be in the business because the internet's kind of an important thing. This is. Uh, what happens in an internet minute in 2017? Uh, the folks that put this graph together went to the quarterly reports of all these companies, did the math down to 60 seconds, and came up with this pie chart. So by the time I'm done with the talk today, there'll be about a billion text messages sent. There'll be 210 million uh, Google searches and 3,000 Amazon Echoes sent just in the next hour alone. Email, 156 million emails sent per minute. For fun, I uh, ran the math on that, and I don't even know what that is. I tried to Google that number, and if anyone can help me figure that out, uh, that would be good, because um, it doesn't even look like math anymore. It begins to look like physics. So the internet is very much shaping the way we live work and play, and we're all part of it. So there's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity out there for all of us to improve as individuals and as companies and as organizations. And then there's this stat. Um, 
given to me by uh, my coworker Shelly Hutchins, um, who's giving a, a chat on digital buzz, buzz, buzz phrases later this afternoon. Um, when I look at this, um, I can go both ways. Who, who thinks this is really good news? Yeah, I mean, I see a lot of good news in it too, but who, who thinks it's very bad news? Anyone want to volunteer why it is bad news? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I thought I was not contributing to the cause, uh, but then I find myself texting my wife, you know, on another story of the house. Um, <laughs> bought my daughter an iPhone 7, she's 7. So I hope the 15% over here is the, you know, the relationship side of, of, of what we do. But it's just, it's information that we have to face head on. And in order for us to succeed, the takeaway today is we have to, especially with the large enterprise, be ready for the what's new next. And as a community, we need to constantly, constantly evolve. Because bad things happen when you don't. Uh, Kodak, global market leader, um, almost 200,000 employees, vast majority of the market share failed the course correct, and now they're out of business. Um, Hate talking about this one because I was a big Blockbuster fan, uh, but they also didn't see the dark clouds um, rolling in, and now they're, they're not relevant anymore. And it's not always about um, the entire business failing. Sometimes it's just uh, a major restructuring in the organization, uh, reduction in force, or companies' hands being tied and not being able to innovate. And I can't tell you how many meetings I've been in over the last two years where high-level executives in corporations are saying, we're waiting for the market to turn, or we're hoping this goes our way. Uh, waiting and hoping are not strategies, folks. If you find yourself using those words, please, please, please look to thinking more out of the box and uh, organizations that are finding a way uh, to innovate and, and keep that front of mind. The NFL draft is uh, in a couple days. I'm a big NFL fan. They're streaming games on Twitter now. Does anyone know why that is? That's your guess? Well, they're trying to dig into the early 20s, mid-20s uh, market. And those kids aren't sitting in front of the television on Sunday in the lazy chair with the remote control. They're on their mobile devices. So, the NFL is going to where that new audience is. They are planning to remove advertisements during games. That, to me, feels like the Jerry Maguire letter where you're sitting up one night and you think it's great for the game and great for you and great for everybody, but that lands on the wrong C-level, C-suite's desk and uh, you could be out of a job. But that very, very, very much is part of their business strategy. They're not taking revenue out. They're just making the property more valuable. I mean, there's not as much space there you can offer more for it. And if the audience that you're going after isn't engaged, then um, you're not counterproductive to what you're trying to do. I mean, I just don't think it would be too hard to sell Super Bowl ads. I mean, I would think there would be a rush of people uh, coming into that space because of the limited real estate. So. They're changing their revenue model to make the game a lot better for their target audiences. Same game I was watching, they're now pulling data on how long it takes for someone to sack a quarterback and they rank them by uh, individuals in real time. So it got me thinking, what data out there are we sitting on top of that we're not currently uh, using? How do we go about getting it and then where could uh, it be a value outside of, of where it's currently being used. Anybody use Lyft or Uber? Yep. So Lyft is making grounds on Uber, and one reason is they're constantly innovating, constantly evolving. Uh, they now formed a partnership with General Motors, where if they do 75 rides or more a week, they get their car for free, and they can use that for personal use. So if Lyft is sitting back saying, let's get more drivers on the road, that's a good way to do it. Also, not everyone has a vehicle that's appropriate for Lyft. So 
they're stuck. This is a good way of solving those problems. And it basically uh, opens up the market for more people to participate. Therefore, your ride gets there quicker, and Lyft is all of a sudden moving ahead of the market uh, from Uber. This mustache thing's pretty cool. Uh, if you're at a big venue or a concert and it's dark and you need to find your ride, that solves for that. It also um, shows your name when it pulls up. It says hello to you, so you know which car is yours. So they're never sitting stagnant saying, all right, we got, we got the platform built exactly the way we want it. They're always looking at where the next deed, need is and where the next opportunity is. And that's uh, really good uh, timing for us in the Drupal space because uh, it's now in the right quadrant um, for the large enterprise. Um, the Gartner Magic Quadrant is where the large enterprise goes to pick their short list of what technologies they're going to use. It's where they trust good solutions are. And Acquia has been uh, climbing that uh, ladder as a platform. But all of us are responsible for the su success of Drupal. Every project we touch is impacting an individual, is impacting an organization. So we share in this success. It's, it's ranked with Acquia, but we share in the success. Acquia's um, partner network got a five out of five from Forrester. So all the industry insiders are looking to Drupal and the partner and the development community as the go-to uh, solution for web architecture. And that is so huge because um, the future for digital is so bright. So we are sitting exactly where we need to be and we just need to make sure that we're pushing forward and we got some suggestions for that. Making good headway. Um, more and more of the Fortune 500 organizations using Drupal. 43% uh, increase in Drupal adoption over the last two years. This stat was provided by John Anoop. John, are you in the audience? No? Okay. Um, all this to say that we're heading in the right direction and we just need to keep um, pushing forward. So what does evolution mean? Um, to me, it means looking at things differently. I showed this stat earlier. The evolution of the large enterprise in Drupal, it all just doesn't come down to the platform. There's evolution occurring in all of these areas in how people are putting together the business case to adopt Drupal, how people are demoing Drupal for the C-suite, how you build consensus in an organization. Why is IT and marketing still on two sides of the fence? Why can't they play nicely together in the same sandbox? Um, there's some uh, progress being made there. How to properly um, deliver a project through development methodologies. What was a really good development methodology two years ago, all of a sudden isn't as good with Agile and how we're, pro how we're progressing there. So um, change is happening all around us. Uh, it's affecting every single area of the uh, project. And it's important that we change our paradigm. And where that really struck me was I was at a um, conference in um, uh, New York called the, sorry, I went backwards there. The Digital Market Event of the Year, the Salesforce Connections Conference. Uh, it was in New York. If you've ever been a featured speaker for Salesforce, uh, it's, it's pretty incredible what they do pick you up at the airport, get you a room on Times Square, all expenses paid. And one of the things they do is they take you out to dinner at a nice restaurant. And we were sharing stories on where each other's businesses are moving forward. And I always looked at Salesforce um, pretty much as a sales guy's tool. You know, they log calls and emails, and that's how they're tracking their pipeline uh, for the business. But I was, as I was talking to her at dinner that night, she said something that was really, really profound. She said, what we're trying to solve for as a company is what happens when we get every single salesperson on the planet using our software? Then where do we go? So going back to that list of Fortune 500 companies, what happens when all of those organizations get onto Drupal? Are there dot coms onto Drupal? Where do we take the technology within their organization? So they went from, you know, just a tool for uh, salespeople to this. That's their product menu. And they're now serving up platforms across multiple, multiple verticals. So a good 
uh, use case for how to move left and right. So I came back from that conference, stumbled upon this slide, and you know, because we're in the website business, you know, this was this was kind of scary. You know, what happens when you know the dot com is no longer the spot to uh, go to for for a large enterprise? What happens if a large enterprise isn't tracking the right KPIs for their website and they're just not willing to invest in it anymore? What does that happen to you working on the project? What does that happen to you as an agency who sold it in? What does that happen to you as an organization in digital infrastructure? So the light bulb just kind of went off around, all right, we've got to start pushing Drupal deeper and past just the public facing .com website. We're making a lot of progress there. Um, you'll learn a lot about some cool projects here uh, at the con, but a few use cases. Universities have 1,500 plus URLs on campus. They've got 12 different systems. They're all disconnected. I think one of the reasons Drupal's been so popular in that space is because of the opportunity to centralize all that. Large enterprises have 300 plus digital assets that they're responsible for. They're craving a single point of entry. Why are we sending customers to a support portal? Why are we sending investors to an investor portal? Why aren't they all going to one spot? And, you know, Drupal in government, I mean, on the Dries note this morning, I thought I heard him right saying that the city of San Francisco said every website that they build has to be in Drupal 8. What popped in my head was, do they know uh, how to define website? Are they only thinking what the public can see? Are they thinking about it in terms of what infrastructure they're running? And with, with how government has adopted Drupal, there's just so much uh, opportunity for where they can take that. At Media Current, who I work for, half of our projects last year for the large enterprise were not at all related to their primary dot com. They were in other areas. So massive, massive market beyond just the, the dot com web property. So how do we evolve? You know, how do we move forward? Uh, the line I like to use is, you know, know where the puck is going and then skate to it. And the way you find that out is you ask questions. I mentioned earlier, um, you know, my passion point is making sure and uncovering the why around all these large enterprise projects. Well, we note that. And when you're writing that down over a period of two years, you can start seeing trends. And another way to do that is just ask, you know, do some surveys. And we ran one for 50 plus uh, large enterprise executives across IT and marketing. And put this survey out here. I'll give you a couple minutes to digest that and what we were asking them. It was, it was all over the board from you know, hot topics around moving from on-prem into the cloud, um, you know, how to develop a proper way to support your platform, um, how to develop a product roadmap, the importance of web accessibility in our market, how you go about you know, understanding the value of what an open source product looks like, and then um, cybersecurity, which is top of mind, and then, uh, of course, what the understanding of an ROI of an improved user experience would be. And the clear winner wasn't even close, was understanding the ROI of an improved user experience. So, all eyes are on UX, and we've got to find where Drupal and UX cross paths. All of our current KPIs are kindly leaning in that direction anyway. I don't know about you know, how you're measuring your projects, but mobile scores and conversion rates and session times, bounce rate, all of these uh, common KPIs are directly tied to user experience. So again, we have to find a way where that intersection point is with Drupal. 80% of the uh, users that come to a website have a bad experience, they're not coming back. So you got one really good shot uh, to make sure you uh, achieve that objective. So as we look at where that intersection point is between Drupal and an improved UX, knowing that the industry is craving that, I took a look at kind of how far the technology came. And, you know, back in, 1998, um, it was all HTML, paying $85 for an HTML page. All the navigation was at left. Um, we had a term called flyouts. When I'm in the navigation at the top, it's called a drop down. And, you know, it wasn't real sophisticated at all, but we were just starting to build uh, what a website was. 
Has anyone ever heard of uh, archive.org? Yeah? Cool uh, website, still out there doing a good job. I mentioned sports earlier. This was uh, ESPN.com in January 25th, 1999. There's that trusty left navigation menu. And here's uh, ESPN.com today. But it's fascinating. You can spend hours on that tool uh, seeing the befores and afters. And you can use it in your own organization if you want to make a really strong business case on how far, that you've, how, how far you've come. So the, the roadmap that Drupal has come across in the UX to me has been fascinating. And it's been driven by uh, responding to the needs of the market and our fantastic contributed community. So 2000, 2007, 2008, you know, video is starting to come around. Uh, we're looking at more sophisticated account management. Personalizations starting to happen a little bit. Um, you know, precursor for mobile. 2014, responsive is in full bloom. That's typically tied and always tied to UX. Content marketing starts to happen. All right, what happens when we understand what the visitor's uh, preferences are? How do we make sure we keep putting that back to them? So marketing automation uh, sprung up. And then decoupled, an area where we spend a lot of our time was an absolute game changer for the marketplace in keeping Drupal relevant in those UX conversations. Localization, critically important to uh, UX, and Drupal's made fantastic strides there. So if we look at um, 2017, um, you know, web accessibility is uh, front of mind. Personalization is in full bloom. Products like Lyft uh, are starting to be used, and in the markets we can you know, understand the value of that. But a big one is, is change management, and just the ability to um, you know, build consensus within an organization to have them let go of what they used to do and move forward with what they uh, need to do. So where does that take us next? Well, uh, all the Angular, uh, React, front-end tools, there's more and more of those occurring on Drupal projects. Uh, that's really, really important because that uh, UX is being done on sites that aren't running on Drupal, so we need to keep pace with them. And then we've got to think, you know, 2020, 2022, 2024, 2026, where are we going to go next? And I think part of that is knowing the difference between user experience and design, and then making sure we're all uh, carrying that torch forward. So when I think of UX, I'm not just thinking about customers. You know, I'm thinking about employees. You know, what's their day-to-day -day like? What sort of systems are they working on that they are really pulling their hair out about? But for whatever reason, aren't talking up. What about potential employees, the people you're trying to recruit? How easy is it for them to engage with your company, to learn about your company, to be employed with your company? Uh, the C-suite. Uh, I mentioned universities earlier. Um, you know, a lot of the senior leadership there didn't come up in the same generation where all this, you know, digital um, new experience is happening. So when you mention things like CRM or UX or all the terms that we use, you know, it sounds Greek to them. We've got to find a way to put it in their uh, terms. And I, that's very much a user experience for the C-suite. Maybe they need to see a demo. Maybe they need to see a mock-up. You, you just never know. And then, of course, on a global scale, we need to start looking at how we're localizing um, content and then how we're um, addressing our digital uh, web accessibility, both externally and internally. So here's some trends that, um, that I've been seeing over the last uh, two years. Uh, Over-engineering is preventing the ability to move forward. So if you've got a big custom stack and there's, you're really wed to it for one reason or another, and you want to quickly respond to a new UX trend in the marketplace, I mean, it's just not, not easy to do. So Jiffy Lube project last year had a real big custom stack, um, but they liked the tools that they were using on the front end. Uh, they were very performant. 
So the recommendation there is not to come into the room and say, all right, everything you've done is terrible. We can't reuse any of it, so you have to adopt this new thing because that wouldn't have went over well. The solution was keeping what they have uh, that was working, decoupling Drupal to take advantage of that. And that was a Drupal 8 PHP 7 project. And then using the API that we have available to integrate all of the different uh, systems that were that we're plugging into that um, website. So that's real important. If you're trying to sell on a project, if we're trying to move the marketplace forward, we've got to be smart at the solutions that we're, we're putting forth. Um, this one kind of jumped off the page for me, too. Uh, I hear a lot that global strategy is uh, important. It's on everyone's product roadmap. But it still feels like a phase two. Let's get phase one done, and then phase two, let's try to translate it. But the lion's share of the global market is not in English. And 73% actually require that local UX. And as a result, if you're localizing your site, ROI is really going through the roof. But this still is seen as a nice to have, and it can no longer be. Uh, working towards centralizing on one um, platform for all digital assets, that's what people want to do. But if you're a $6 billion company with 200,000 employees, how big of a project does that feel like? Huge, absolutely huge. Where probably it's you know paralysis by analysis. You just don't know where to start. And it's, it's costing people by not moving in that direction. Um, here's an example of what centralizing on a platform for a university could look like. So say, and most universities have a big donation goal, and you know obviously they have donors that you know, are recent grads buying the branded credit card, and they have ones that are over a million. Clearly, they want to pull in you know, the million-dollar donors. They know that profile. They've been working really, really hard to figure out what that profile is. What if, through the student application process or through the student coursework, you could identify uh, what those data points are that map to that $1 million profile and then start that conversation earlier. So if I'm a student at Penn State University and I'm seeing where donations are helping me out while I'm there, it's a lot easier to get my support after I graduate. If I graduate and I just paid you $40,000 and I'm working hard to pay that back and the first email you send me is buy this credit card or send me you know, a $500 check for dues, <coughs> you're just disengaging at that point. But if you can show value along the way, specifically to those students who fit that profile, that would be a very, very powerful thing. But a lot of systems and, and interoperability um, have to happen for this to see uh, the dawn. So baby steps are important, proof of concepts are important, but the opportunity is, is all around us. So in many cases with these big projects, it's like um, herding cats. One way you can uh, organize um, you know, the large enterprise across IT, across marketing, is to do, you know, use Drupal 8 as a proof of concept. I mean, it's not too hard to spin up uh, a new web property just to show it working. You know, hey, a user can log in, they're seeing this page. Uh, the new VM is making the local setup a lot easier to do, so it's not as painful on your development team. And we're seeing across the market, especially with the large enterprise, once they can see it, Regardless if it's you know two pages or 20 pages, one piece of functionality or 100 pieces of functionality, they're far more likely to get behind it. Where if you're sitting in a room saying, yeah, we can make it do this and we can make it do that, I mean, that's um, a little more difficult for someone to envision. Um, we have a conversational interface pilot at our booth. That worked really, really well. Didn't take um, long at all to spin up an Amazon Echo POC that did a really good job you know, getting the organization to adopt uh, that latest and greatest technology. Some other examples on where to look for UX. Um, you know, as an organization, there's a lot of corporate missions and culture objectives that are being put out there. It's important to look at how Drupal and technology is supporting those. Um, constantly hearing about, look, uh, budgets are, are tight, we're looking for ways to run lean. Well, how many systems do you currently manage content with? You have a 
a different team posting the social and a different team posting to the website. I mean, how, how convoluted is that? How would you benefit from a centralized platform? Which one of these systems could you retire and find uh, ROI in? Uh, talked about the portals earlier. Um, it's important to be able to do a cost analysis there. And then hiring. M the millennial market's in demand, um, but they're not going to be too patient with an old clunky uh, job application. Um, so you want to look at how easy those things are uh, from the inside out. So I have these little dollar signs there to remind me that there's ROI and investment opportunities across all of these uh, different opportunities. But if you're not asking the questions, if you're not running the analysis, again, you can continue to be stuck in the mud. For example, um, this client called Curtis Wright, that's an organization that works with uh, our Defense Department and is born from the Wright brothers. And their CEO wanted to be one Curtis Wright. They have 9,000 employees across the company. So their big objective in that year was to you know, become more, uh, increase collaboration and become more of a one, one group. And they didn't have a central hub to do it. So that made an intranet uh, a really good, strong solution there. And put that together for them, and now they're adding more and more to it and finding more and more efficiencies. So that came from, we've got a statement in our annual report to an internet, intranet project over the period of about six, six months. So the, um, their .com's not on Drupal yet. That wasn't their preference. It was their intranet. Other things I took out I thought that you'd be interested in um, hearing about uh, from the panel discussions and the surveys. So creativity, efficiency, and ROI are kind of what you want to have at the table uh, when you're looking to start a new project uh, and they're looking for a partner or an internal team that has. When picking creative, a large enterprise expects you to really know the industry and really know the vertical. So the more information you can bring around what other groups in the industry are doing, the better. When evaluating a large scope of work, uh, maybe this is inherent for a large enterprise is looking for a very big team. If it's something that's more niche, uh, such as multi multicultural marketing, they look for more small agencies who have a specific uh, expertise. Okay, so what's new next? Data visualization is really coming online uh, at the moment. This is a snapshot of a website that is um, working hard to uncover uh, the profile of their visitor. Um, pretty user friendly, series of questions, basically a um, glorified quiz and then they're taking in the information on the the back end and it's in a flat file and they're you know using ad hoc systems to make sense of it with Drupal and personalization technologies and new front-end tools we can use interoperability to s solve all of that we can uh, grab the data that's in our existing databases. We can tie that to new data that we're learning from website traffic. Um, if you're a salesperson and you're selling, you know, a complicated uh, financial services product and you're trying to show someone, you know, how their policy looks, um, you know, a long document is really hard to uh, digest. I mean, when you get your insurance policy every six months, are you really reading through it? Wouldn't it be better to have something visual that you could look at that was personalized to you and showing you where you had the opportunities to um, increase your protection? This is where it's going. And you know, I hate to pull out an old movie, but when you would have data around you and you can you know, use 3D and other technologies to assemble it, I just think there's a huge, um, opportunity there to help people visualize the data that that you know they're they're capturing and understand it better. <coughs> EV market, massive uh, changes being made there. Uh, a lot of the local um, city governments are you know mandating police to start driving electronic vis vehicles. There's been um, a big push across the board for more eco-friendly 
operations like that. And this is going to become more and more a part of, of our life. And currently, there's charging stations, but you don't know a whole lot of data about them until you get there. There's a BACnet Drupal module that ties into energy systems uh, within buildings. One vision could be uh, having a website where you could locate the charging stations and be able to see how much juice each one of those stations have, be able to see um, you know, what else is there. Maybe it's going to take two hours to charge the car, and it's right by a movie theater, and you can catch a movie at the time. Maybe it's by a grocery store, and you can use that opportunity to do your shopping. So imagine if you could grab all the energy data that's sitting in this BACnet protocol, which is the standard around how all new buildings are made, and bring that forward using a Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 module. Another way to, uh, to make sure we're heading in the right direction is to look hard at your team structure. How has it changed over the years? Is it moving you know, in the hockey stick fashion here or is it staying stagnant? How much are you investing in new talent and additional talent to support your initiatives? First question out of a large enterprise CIO is, who's your chief security officer? If you don't have someone dedicated to that piece, you're really, really missing out. That is critically important. Um, quality assurance, sometimes something that we glean over. That is becoming more and more important. Uh, what type of talent is in demand today, and then do you have it? And are you working on plans to, to go acquire it? Um, you know, five years ago, Smack was all the rage, social, mobile, analytic cloud. Um, now we're talking more Angular, security, accessibility. Project management is so, so critical, making sure these projects stay on the rails. And then business and data analytics um, is really reigning supreme. Training is a good way to evolve, uh, showing tremendous ROI across the board when you invest in training. You, know, you can look inside and, and ask yourselves, you know, what type of training opportunities are you having for your own self? Uh, what uh, training opportunities are you supporting for your team? And that's a big, big opportunity. I'm seeing more uh, training options in the Drupal community, which is, which is good. So what does this all mean to you? Um, as a large enterprise, if you're out there working for a large enterprise, you know, the key question there is, now that I've adopted it, how far can we take it and what are the benefits? That's a really, really important question. Um, not everyone knows what Drupal is. I had a, a second to the CIO um, ask me what Drupal was just last week when they were talking about bring, coming down onto uh, one centralized platform. Um, you know, are we leveraging our investments in Drupal effectively? What data are you looking at to know that your Drupal solution is working and then are IT and marketing aligned? Those are three critical bullets. If you're a digital agency, you know, ask, that, ask yourself that same question that Salesforce did. You know, what happens if we have 12 target accounts, we get them all and they're all running Drupal, and where do we go next? And then for everyone, I think, you know, a good question that we can ask ourselves is how did we describe Drupal in 2004, and then how are we describing it in 2007? This is Gartner's definition. You know, are we happy with that? With all the information I presented today in terms of how the technology is being used to grow the large enterprise, to shape the internet, I just think we're much bigger than a WCM at this point. So we have to change that conversation as a group. There's uh, the Wikipedia definition. And we've really, really evolved past that point. But that hasn't changed on the website yet. So quick checklist um, for success with the large enterprise. Change management is uh, top of mind. I think the marketplace knows where they want to go. They just need help in getting there. Uh, I think as a community, we've got to do a much better job with our case studies. I'm looking. I'm learning, and it's just not doing much other than saying, we, saw, we were charged with this, we delivered that, um, 
not a lot of measurable results in there that hang our hats on, not as many demos in the marketplace that we should be uh, looking at. So we all need to just write better case studies and, and showcase our work more. We need to learn how to translate Drupal's language into the business language. Uh, you know, decoupled is just going to fly over the heads of, of, of many uh, executives that are out there considering, you know, the Drupal platform. Bring it into language that they can understand, like an improved user experience. Uh, discovery process uh, is something that is, is critical, making sure before you start a new project, you're learning all what the requirements are and evolving with that. A lot of people don't know what discovery is. They don't, they don't know why it's required uh, with a technology like Drupal. Um, more and more, we're managing projects in an agile way, which is important. That's you know, delivering uh, more frequently to the specific needs of the business. Uh, but you have to blend that with how companies are used to budgeting projects. You know, they're used to working in a very waterfall fashion. Road mapping is important. You know, where is our product? Where is our platform going to be uh, six months from now? Where is it going to be 12 months from now? Where is it going to be two years from now? Those are important conversations. Um, conflicts a little bit with managing projects in an agile way because you're kind of going with what's hot at the moment. But it still should be something that you're using as a, as a guiding light. And then um, partnering with procurement um, for everyone in the room. They are not our enemies, they are our friends. They are controlling how business gets done in the large enterprise, and too often they're brought in at the last minute. Um, so making them aware of the projects we're working on and involving them early is absolutely um, critical. So I wanted to save about 10 minutes uh, for questions or comments. Uh, thank you very much for, um, for uh, your attention today. I appreciate it. Any uh, questions or comments? No? Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it.